MXTV is proudly brought to you by Swan Insurance, protecting motorcyclists since 1956. And Motor, quality oils for more than 150 years. I'm Lee Hogan and welcome to a brand new season of MXTV. I'm joined once again by the man next to me, Brandon Bell. Welcome, Belly. Thanks, Lee, mate. I am absolutely pumped. We've got another huge series of MXTV to come. 13 weeks of non-stop action. And tonight's show is going to be massive as always, isn't it? It's going to be huge, because in tonight's show, I'll give you a look at the 2015 YZs at this year's Yamaha launch. We check out all the action at the Enduro Cross. Belly will introduce us to this year's MXTV project bikes. We see what the Australian four-day enduro is all about. And Luke and I get to test the KX450F, plus plenty more. Now, the first show is going to be a huge one, Belly. Oh, you can say that again, Lee. And to begin with, you rocked up to the 2015 Yamaha YZ launch. Let's see what went down. We're here at the Queensland Motorcycle Park testing the brand new 2015 model Yamaha 254 stroke and 454 stroke. Sunny conditions, beautiful track, nice bit of moisture out there, what more could you ask for? The bike here alongside me is a new 252 stroke from Yamaha. It includes a brand new performance kit we're going to offer of resale for every time we sell this motorcycle. It comes, as you see it, plus with the performance pipe, the uh, oversized brake rotor, the rear sprocket, the stand, the chain and oil products, and also the whole shot button. So it adds a great little value add package to Yamaha and also makes the bike super competitive straight from the retail floor. For me personally, a great day. Yamaha fully laid it out for us. A well catered lunch. The bikes were all immaculate. So many bikes to choose from. And a bunch of big gun names here, including Jacob Wright, Jay Wilson, the recently crowned Lights MX2 champion, Luke Clout. Now, my main job here was to test the 250 and 454 strokes. We'll start with the 450, because that's the bike that I first threw a leg over. Wow, what can we say more about the horsepower of this machine? Second to none. It's quite possibly up there horsepower-wise with some of the race bikes that we'd see not only around the country, but around the world. This thing will pull you out of any situation and plenty of nice, deep, soft, loamy corners here today, that's for sure. First thing I felt was the gearing. I noticed it really smooth and the power delivery was a little bit more like a factory bike feel. It was really torquey and strong but nice and smooth. The throttle felt a lot lighter which gave it a lot of really good feel from the throttle to the wheel and drive and tractability. The biggest improvement for me was the flex in the engine and the chassis. It felt a lot more stable through the turns and just more comfortable on the track. Overall, it's going to be a great bike for the club rider right through to the pro rider. I think Yamaha's really nailed it with the range of what this bike is capable of. It's going to be easy to hook those gears and ride it in a higher gear, but it's also going to be a great bike to really attack the track at pro rider level. I think the customer's very much going to enjoy this bike. And talking about the 254 stroke, once again, an amazing engine. It was class leader this year, the 2014 model. As we said, Luke Clout wrapping up the championship. But the production 2015 model, unbelievable amount of horsepower. This thing really does have some snig. It has very similar handling characteristics to its bigger brother, the 450. And you really do have to be nice and aggressive tipping it into the corners. It will hold a nice line through the ruts, though. Super stable coming into those choppy bumps. And uh, first thing I noticed straight away was more mid range power you know whether you're a guy that revs a bike or shift early it made it really either get to where to the higher revs quicker or made it torquier and able to pull those gears through the mids the throttle spring was softer and it was a little bit of a better feel from the throttle to the wheel so you sort of really felt like you're at one with the bike 
really just some tweaks, but overall quite a big improvement across the range. So as we can see, the development with both of these bikes has been in the same direction and they're having a lot of success by doing it this way. A sensational job done by Yamaha. These bikes have definitely got what it takes, that's for sure. Hands-on Kawasaki Motorcycles has over 25 years of professional experience in the industry. We offer quality Kawasaki Motorcycles, ATVs, mules and jet skis, from finance to insurance. Hands-on features state-of-the-art workshop facilities with highly trained and experienced factory trained technicians. We have a vast range of accessories and if it's Kawasaki, then we have it. Contact us now and don't forget to mention MXTV for a great deal. Hands-on Kawasaki. Everything Kawasaki. MXTV is proudly supported by KTM, Alpine Stars, Kawasaki, and Pirelli. Welcome back to MXTV. Well, Enduro Cross has been growing each and every year for quite a while now, and this year was without a doubt no exception. And of course, we were there to check it all out. Let's have a look. It's a gnarly series that the promoters put it together really, really well. There's a lot of infrastructure to it. There's a lot to do. It's a really, really interesting series and a really interesting sport. What it is, it's very tough and it's very easy to go from first to last, just like that. I love racing Enduro Cross. It's good fun racing. It's a bit of motocross, a bit of supercross. You know, we jump things and we can we can make like combo sections up and obviously the motocross start gates as well. It's you know a bit more bar banging. It's a lot funner. It's a bit more tactical as well. You're not sort of out there riding around by yourself. The tracks are all really different. You know, we had a wet one in Sydney. Brisbane was sort of a bit more motocrossy, and here is pretty technical, but open and a bit of a hill workout uh, up the side of the, the Calder Park Raceway. So, you know, it, it was good. It was a lot different, and yeah, good to be back on top and on the Yamaha. And there across is throttle control and clutch control, and then from there on, it's kind of learning the techniques over the logs and the rocks. You know, you gotta just practice. I mean, for me, it was like supercross. I learned how to do supercross. It was just practice, practice, practice the rhythm section, practice the whoop-de-doos. Now it's for me going practice the rocks and then practice the logs and then double on the logs. You know, it's just the same as anything you do. It's practice makes better. So that's, that was me. When I first got on it, I couldn't even get around the track. And now it's I'm not the best at it, but I work hard at it. And that's what's got me here, really. The 2014 Enduro Cross was sick. The tracks were real good. You know, we had Mike Brown come out and do the last two, and he loved it. Like, he does all the Enduro Cross over in America, the, the world stuff, and he was saying how good our rounds are and how good the tracks are. The last track was probably one of the best tracks I've ridden. So was this one. You know, I would put these up against any tracks, the Enduro Cross tracks in America, and it's been good fun. Going back home next week for the GNCC, it's been great practice, and, you know, being with Toby, doing the sand tracks and the high speed, so... I'll, Looking forward to get home now to race. It's hard, real hard work. <laughs> it's, it's that motorbike race and we love it, so we just keep doing it. I think if I start going down the Enduro Cross Road, I need to um, get a little better at it. I'm a bit inconsistent, struggled a little bit with the last two rounds, but the first ones were good. I always want to do the best and race the best, so if I get that opportunity to race over in America, I'll definitely jump on board it. You know, hopefully it just keeps going, it keeps getting bigger and better and us Aussie boys go over and uh, give them yanks and world people a bit of a run for their money at the Enduro Cross. Today here in Culver Park wasn't uh, the best one for me and uh, yeah, I, had, I struggled a little bit but managed to get around to, uh, you know, still keep the points on uh, Toby Price for the championship. To start the year off with a uh, Enduro Cross win, it's a very, very a rewarding feeling and I'm especially to do it with Chris Hollis, who's just come back to Yamaha after, I guess, a two-year break. And uh, to fit straight into the team, he loves the bike, he loves the personnel on the team. So, you know, what a great start to the year. So hopefully we can keep the momentum going.
Okay, Cam, well, here we are at Hands On Kawasaki in Lilydale picking up our 2015 project bikes. I've got a KX250F and Cam's got a KX85. He's had to step it up this year from the 65 to the 85 because he turned 12 years of age. You excited about getting the 85? Yeah, sure I am. Can't wait to ride it. Now let me tell you a few things that have changed on the 250F and of course it's a new generation SFF front fork. This thing's supposed to be a lot better than the previous years and just having it off the stand it feels better let me tell you. The other big thing and for the guys out there that really wanted this is we've got bigger front discs and back discs so the braking power is a lot better on the 250F. Now I won't tell you all the changes that have happened on the KX250F because we will be doing a review later on in the series for this bike. Now the 85 really hasn't changed a lot since 2014 but why would you? They bought a brand new model out in 2014. Now we're going to do some things to these bikes that uh, hopefully make them probably look a little bit better performance wise for riders like us I don't think we need a great deal of performance but we will tell you some of the things that we put on that we do think it needs and, and um, one of course is always everyone loves to put pipes on bikes so we'll get a couple of pro circuits and put them on I'm lucky enough I can put mine on from 2012 so our one my one at least has uh, served me for quite a few years which has been really good all I've had to do is repack it some of the other things that we're going to do to it is obviously put a nice sticky kit on it of course you want to put all your sponsors on there and give them a big shout out because they're the guys that are looking after you and getting you out there racing and Cam, what about you, mate? What would you like on your wish list for your bike? I would probably really like a gripper seat. They've really helped me yeah. the past years. And some unbreakable clutch and front brake, which, you know. <laughs> I can't wait to get out there and try the new bike. It's going to be unbelievable. So make sure you keep watching because at the end of the series, we'll show you what we've done to the bike and I'll tell you about some of the performances that we've got out of the bike. If it's made it any different, any better, any worse, we'll tell you all about that and, of course, can be as short as he is. We're going to have to lower this bike a fair bit to get him on it and get him riding. Brian at Hands On is going to look after our bikes, make sure that they're always running well, and Chad will look after the suspension for us and uh, hopefully get it low enough for you to have a ride. I know, mate. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> well, Cam, why don't we get these bikes loaded up, take them out for a ride. I'm looking forward to that. Are you? Yes, very excited as well. I can't wait to take this thing out. It's going to be a real weapon. I know they've done some great changes to it. Make sure you keep watching throughout the series to see what we've done to the bikes, see how we've blinged them up. Hopefully, you'll approve of it. Maybe you won't. Tell us what you think on Facebook. We'll see you out on the track. Well, I can't wait to see how these KXs turn out. Well, next up, our MXTV off-road reporter, Cade Vag, is going to take us through the Australian four-day enduro. Welcome to the 2014 Yamaha Australian 4-Day Enduro here in Dungog, New South Wales. Let me just run through exactly how an Australian 4-Day Enduro works. Obviously riders race for 4 days and the whole idea of this event is man and machine against the elements. In an event such as the Australian 4-Day Enduro, mechanics are only allowed to hand ride as tools. They can pump up tyres, fill the bike up with fuel, but that is it. When it comes down to it, if there's anything wrong with the machine, it is up to the rider to be able to fix their bike to continue the event. So you really have to be just as good mechanically as you are a rider to complete this course. A four-day enduro starts on a Tuesday with a prologue day where riders go out for a short trail section and they do one special test, a sprint lap around one loop, usually about four to five minutes long. That gives for our riders their seating order for the entire event. Then on Wednesday, they'll kick off day one, 200 kilometres plus per day, six to seven hours on the bike. It's a very tough day. They have section times, very much like a rally, where they have to complete certain sections of trail in a set amount of time, and then they have to race through special tests throughout the day. These special tests are just a sprint loop, usually six to 12 minutes long, and they'll complete about 10 of them a day at maximum, and at least seven per day. The A4DE is just a shortened version of the international six-day Enduros. At the moment, we have some of the best riders in the world here in Australia with the likes of Daniel Milner, Toby Price, Josh Strang and Chris Hollis. These guys on an international scale are the best in the world. So it's great to be able to see these guys battling it out and knowing that Australia has the best riders on oh, offer. You just you want want more. At the start of each day, riders are given a time card and they're given a schedule and it shows them exactly what minute they are to leave Park for May in the morning. Riders leave first thing at 7.30am 
and they leave three riders per minute. On that schedule, it has a time for every rider and each control that they should be at. And the idea is that a rider has to stay on their minute not to lose any time. You can never creep forward, so if you pull into a control and you've got five minutes up your sleeve before you're doing, you get to have a break, bit of a drink, look over your bike and see that it's all holding together after the day's riding, and then leave on your minute. The idea is not to lose time. If riders go in five minutes late, then they get five minutes put on top of their special test time. So obviously five minutes is a long way to be able to pull back in, and you do not want to be losing any time. A day at the four day is broken up into special tests and trail time. Trail time is a section of trail that will be no longer than 60 kilometres long and there will be a checkpoint at each end where you can refuel. You have to complete each trail section in its specified time. Each specified time is different to the other and they are usually set between controls where they will be fuel controls so that you can fuel up at no more than 60 kilometres apart. Now these trail times you have to pull in at least on your minute, if not before, if you are late, that is when you get time added to your overall score for the event. The final day is what we call the final moto. There's a short trail section before, maximum of about an hour's time, and then we go into a final moto where the bikes are impounded before this final moto, and it is a motocross type race. The start gate, just like a motocross event, is at least two kilometres long, and the race will go for minimum 10 minutes in time. Well, there you go. Hopefully that gives you an insight into how the Australian four-day enduro works. We're hoping to see all you weekend warriors out there in Tasmania for next year's Australian four-day enduro in October. Whether you're looking for general service, rebuild parts or increased performance, F1 Moto is a website for you. So check them out at f1moto.com.au or call on 024681 9958. MXTV is proudly supported by Suzuki, Bell Helmets, Yamaha, and SKF. Welcome back to MXTV, thanks to Swan Insurance. Well, it's time to check out our first product review for the year. Let's take a look. Okay, guys, I'm Gary Crilly from Bell Helmets. Today on MXTV, we're going to do a product review on the Bell Motocross line. We'll start with the Bell Moto 9, which is our premium helmet, which has a recommended retail of $569. You'll notice with the visor retention clip, it's a, a wing system. So you click it out and you can just tension, either loosen it or tighten it. You can do it with or without gloves. No more need for tools to adjust your visor. There's no centre screw on the visor system. It's to allow free flow of air over the top of the helmet. It gives a vortex, so it actually sucks hot air out of the helmet. The helmet has seven rear exhaust vents. You get a lot of air flow over the crown of the helmet, which basically cools your head down. And there's also venting through the side of the helmet, which also allows for a cooler head, more concentration, less fatigue. Helmet also has a, a patented Magnafusion strap retainer. There's no more ugly clips that you've got to try and clip your strap to. You know, with mud and wet gloves and that, it just basically clicks straight on. This is a premium motocross helmet worn by James Stewart, developed in conjunction with James and Bell Technicians in Scotts Valley. The helmet's also fitted with an emergency removal system for the cheek pad, so if you have an injured rider with possible neck injuries, you can stabilise the rider and you can actually remove the cheek pads out of the helmet, allowing easy removal of the helmet from the rider. They're actually a patented magnetic system. You can see you can just basically pull them out and throw them back in, they go into place. Moto 9 actually has a BPS, the bag fits into the recess in the EPS. You don't have any discomfort with the bag sitting on top of your head between your head and the EPS. Basically what it is, it's a small air bag that goes into the helmet with a, an airline that runs to the bottom of the helmet. If the rider's injured, you can remove the cheek pads and also pump up the eject system. It's like an air bag and lifts the helmet off the rider's head without any stress to the neck. 
Our mid-range helmet is the MX2. It's a recommended retail of $199.95. It's a full fiberglass shell. It has chin and forehead venting, exhaust through the rear, removable and washable liners. And next we have our entry level helmet, which is a SX1 at $139.95. It's a polycarbonate shell helmet, removable washable liner with double D ring and chin venting. Okay, well that's the summer 13, 2014 Bell MX Rain. Three great models, great graphics, heaps of features, everything you'd possibly want, and they have a five year warranty. Go out, have a look at them, grab one, go and try it for yourself. Well, for the first bike review of the series, Lee and Luke have a look at the KX450F. Let's find out what they think of it. We're here at Frankston Motorcycle Park, and I'm here with Lukey Lee. We're both testing the new 2015 Kawasaki KX450F. A bunch of new changes on this new machine, sensational. Let me start with up the front of the bike. The forks, it's what's called the triple chamber SFF factory forks. These things are unbelievable. The third chamber here basically acts as a blow-off valve so that it keeps the pressures really regular. Also new on the Kawasaki, 270 mil front brake disc stops this bike a lot quicker than the old one. If you have a bit of a look down at the engine, some nice cool coloured green bling. They've really styled it off the American factory bikes here, looks quite cool. A couple of different changes to the ECU, the mapping of this bike, all aimed at a bit more tractability. So I'm looking forward to getting out and giving it a bit of a go, what do you reckon? Yeah, it sounds like the changes they've made to the bike is awesome. Can't wait to get out there and put it to a test on the track. All right, well, let's go uh, get out here on that nice loaminess that Frankston's got for us today. Looking forward to it. Quite a few new changes that we're putting to the test out there on the track today, but none bigger than these new forks up the front. The 49mm triple air function fork. These things work exceptionally well. They'll take any big hit that you can throw at it, and there's plenty of them out there on the track today. The new 270mm front disc will stop a Mack truck, let alone this Kawasaki here. The green bling and stuff on the engine, can't really notice when you're riding, but man, it looks super trick. As far as the engine, there's a little bit of a, a slightly different mapping going on, and you can really feel that. A little bit more bottom end, and it flows nicely right the way through to the mid-range. But overall, all the little things that Kawasaki have done have added out there on the track. You can really feel it. Definitely the uh, new triple function air forks um, and the oversized dicks. Massive advantage having these air forks, and especially with the bottom room resistance and the braking resistance you have coming into corners. The bike is very stable and it tracked awesome and I felt the 450 today felt very well on the corners. I stayed very planted and nice little squat position coming exiting the turns to allow the most traction you can get possible. Yeah, it's just a great bike. For me, out of all of the 450 bikes, this thing feels a little bit on the heavy side when trying to tip it into corners, and you have to be a little bit forceful almost at times. Uh, but that being said, it does translate into extra stability on those high-speed parts of the track. For me personally, I didn't really have a, any problems with the bike. I actually loved it from the word go, so yeah, I couldn't say anything bad about this bike. Well, that's a wrap here at Frankston Moto Park. We're testing the brand new 2015 Kawasaki KX450. What a bike. If you're a Cowie fan, get on down to your local dealership and go purchase one because these things are awesome. Well, thank you very much, Lukey Lee, for uh, coming out and testing the bike today. Mate, I must say you look good on that thing. Yeah, thanks for having me. I had a really good time out here at Frankston just riding the KXF450. Good times. All right, well, that's a wrap. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. For all your motorcycle insurance needs, visit swanmotorcycle.com.au. Well, Lee, look like you and Lukey were throwing around that 450 just like a 250, and how primed was that track? Unbelievable. It was so good, let me tell you. The Frankston Motorcycle Track, unbelievable. It's what we like to call chocolate cake. Awesome. Well, that's about all we've got time for this week. Thanks so much for joining us. But make sure you log on to MXTV and Milwaukee's Facebook and Instagram page. Give us a like and a share. You'll go in with a chance to win this unbelievable Milwaukee prize pack. I'm on it, Lee. I'm on it. Well, Belly, you know you actually can't win it, mate, but keep giving <sighs> it a try. I always like and cheers.
Thanks so much for joining us, Belly. Thanks for uh, coming along once again. I wouldn't be anywhere else. And an awesome way to start off this season. Until we see you next week, thanks for joining I'm us. Ready. Hold it on! Oh, I'm going! <laughs> <laughs> Little forts and uh, forts. 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 That's right, we'll just go from the forts. top. And you finish that trail time well before your, speci your specified. Yeah. <laughs> I knew this would happen. <laughs>and make sure you're going with your, with your chance. Oh, I could see you as just doing do it like you're <laughs> holding a pin down the corner of my eye. Like, wow. MXTV is proudly brought to you by Swan Insurance, protecting motorcyclists since 1956. And Motor, quality oils for more than 150 years.